Do you sense the silence within? Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, I feel presence. Yes, this is you. Is it? The presence that is silently aware of itself is your true nature, is you. It's possible there. Its presence is omnipresent. What happens is the mind veils it and then projects images. So sometimes in the morning there is no veiling. It depends because if there is dreaming and then you wake up, then there might be veiling there. Just presence reveals itself to itself spontaneously. It's not something the mind can do. Yet the mind can undo itself and then what remains is presence by itself. And that's that's the work of discrimination or inquiry. Yeah, the inquiry and discrimination. Uh, that's what I've. That's what I've done. It, when you when you speak of that, it makes it makes perfect sense. What you what what I've seen in your videos about discrimination and uh, your method of in, inquiry. Yeah. This is how the mind returns back to the self which is you. That's how the mind returns to the presence which is absolutely, absolutely silent and aware. The whole work is the mind returning back into you, to the self, not you as an indi individual or separate entity, to the beingness of you. I see both pictures or three in the wall behind you of Nazir Gadatta and Robert Adams. Yes. These are great beings that inspired this mind to keep inquiring and return, bring the mind back to its source. This is how the mind can use symbols, 
that it projects ex external of itself to return back into the self. So this, this presence that I feel, that appears to come and go. So when, it, when the presence is here, uh, the body is known. When the presence subsides, uh, then the body is not, uh, it's not, it's not known. And yet, the absence is known. That absence is not absence. That's who I am. So let's just come back. The, the presence of who you are does not appear and disappear mm. because it's only present. Yet, from the, the mind perspective, what happens, the mind, if you experience the presence of who you are, or when you, this experience is changeless. Changeless awareness. Now a thought appears in that field of awareness, and when the thought appears, when the mind fix its attention on the thought, it's, it in a way all the light of awareness gets focused and appears to be contracted. Yet if you inquire, if the mind inquires in that moment, the thought disappears and awareness didn't change, it never moved. That's the game that happens out of habits. The mind is rooted in awareness and then the habit comes out and it's like the whole light of awareness which is infinite appears to be um, trapped or narrowed into a thought image or, or ideas and then this image start to evolve and the mind gets into a dream Yet when you inquire, it stops that movement and then the mind rests again. So awareness is omnipresent. The thought grabs the attention and pulls the mind outward into a dream. And when the mind inquires into its true nature or where it arises from, the thoughts disappear, awareness remains. And the more awareness remains, the power of the mind or the appearance of the thoughts to be real dissolve and disappear. So awareness is omnipresent, it never appears and disappears. It's the mind appears within awareness and veils it and creates the illusion that awareness is no longer there. And that's just the trick of the illusion. The mind is very elusive. It's not real and it appears and then it appears to be real. And then it is examined and inquired into its nature and it seems to be unreal and disappears. And the habits, the vasanas, comes into the surface to clear themselves. 
then they have to be just being inquired or discriminated so the movie doesn't get perpetuated the dream is not perpetuated and then the mind gets rooted in awareness so awareness is you is your true nature you can never lose it nor gain it it's already you you just to lose the idea that you are a separate entity as I that thinks and dreams and imagines this thought or that thought and the more the mind is returning back to awareness which is you the doubt of the mind whether it's you vanishes the doubts have to be removed there are layers of doubts and that's normal you keep inquiring and these doubts diminish when you when there is a direct experience of you then you don't understand that it's you you just experience that it's you there is no understanding in experience of awareness the understanding would be that the thoughts are not you that the thoughts are not real that will be an understanding for the mind You've said that uh, paying attention to the vasanas is not enough. Yes, because when you pay attention to the vasana, anything you give atten attention to, you give it life. So when you shift the attention, you don't give it life. Means you catch it when it appears and you examine is it real? or you examine am I this thought or who am I without this thought and after that question if there is no answer mental answer then what remains is you that's the real answer is experience of awareness so that's once you question it you just leave it alone, that's it. Yes, because we question not because we're interested in the answer. We question because when the mind questions itself, it disappears. When the mind is looking for itself, it disappears because it's a phantom. It's like, let's say, you're in a dark room and you sit and you feel there is a ghost. Now, if you believe that there is a ghost because you think and you sense there is a ghost, your experience would be that there is a ghost. Yet, if you would say, okay, I want to check out to see if there is a ghost and you'll turn on the light and look for it, it's gone. Because the presence of awareness is within the thought and the thought within awareness, when you look for the thought, it disappears. Awareness remains. Mm. 
with sensation. Body sensation. Body sensation is good for emotions. Yet the body doesn't really have sensation. Sensation is in the mind. So it's still not enough. This is why inquiry into the self has nothing to do with bodily sensation. Sorry, can you explain that? Yes. Sensation or every physical experience is a sensation. Now, out of habit, the one who perceives the sensation is the mind. So, if the sensation is pleasant, the mind likes it, it wants more. If the sensation is unpleasant, the mind doesn't like it and it wants to get rid of it. In both situations, the mind is reacting to the bodily sensation. <coughs> because the lower mind, the eye that thinks it is a physical body, is seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. So it's seeking a pleasant sensation and is afraid of unpleasant sensation. So it's reacting to the changing of the sensation. This is good to observe it, that reactivity so you stop reacting to the habit of reacting to the sensation. Now, once the mind stops reacting to the reactivity of the sensation, when the mind starts to inquire, it inquires who is reacting? Who is this I? Where is the I arise from? Then you left sensation. It's more on the subtle thoughts. And when the thought disappear, there is a direct, direct experience of awareness which is experienced in the body without knowing it is a body because it's just the presence of awareness. So, Alan, uh, lately I've noticed some thoughts uh, are faster. They, they come and go very quickly. So, even those fast thoughts have to be uh, cool. So it depends. If you if you experience the presence of awareness, and these thoughts appear and disappear fast, they don't evolve. They're gone. Doesn't matter. Yes, because it's like the vasana came and burnt itself, just released. Yet, if they appear and they grab the mind's attention, you would see it get attached to them and get lost in the dream. Now you have to inquire. Yeah. This is already the, the vigilance within you has to guide you. The beingness? The, no, vigilance. Um, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and 
and clearing the doubts. Yes. When there is a but doubt, sorry. Go ahead. There, there are also a, a doubts vasana. All the doubts are vasanas. Doubt the doubt itself. Oh, uh, as inquiry. Yes. Doubt, doubt itself. Yes. Who is having this doubt? It's always the I. Am I this I? Without this doubt, who am I? And prior to that doubt, who was I? And when the doubt disappears, what remains? that becomes apparent as you awaken in the morning is it important to catch that or to question that when you as I've been I've been I've been doing for some time when you question the presence of awareness, you realize that it's just a the thought within the field of awareness. So it's not awareness. And that's easily discarded. Easily discarded? Yes, because it's just a movement within awareness. One, that's it. You don't need to keep steering movement within awareness when the mind is not active. You just have to catch that movement. Yes, if it appeared it's already there, the thought. Now you, you meet it with inquiry. If nothing appeared, don't steer the thoughts. Because you create turbulence and that creates a veil that covers awareness, apparently. It's not real. It just appears like it does. It's like... The cloud can never really cover the sun. It just appears, yet it's tiny. And it depends from what perspective. Being from the earth, it appears like a tiny cloud, even if it's a huge, cover enormous sun that is greater and larger than the earth. Yet from the, the sun perspective, it never covers it. So from the point of view of I am a separate entity, physical body, 
it appears if steering the thoughts it would apparently appear that it covers awareness yet that's not true from awareness point of view all there is is awareness nothing else exists so don't steer thoughts that would create like mud covering something like awareness sorry so did you say don't fear thought no don't steer steer like steering oh steer yes Detachment. Stay detached. It by itself happens. In the in the beginning, or it, there is still the habit of the mind to trigger more thoughts to come into the surface because it's active. The more it questions itself, the mind rests in awareness, and then. Or only vasanas can come or just resting there's no it's not habitually anymore of, mm, obsessively thinking about nothing Sometimes I feel a sinking feeling and sometimes it even feels like a curtain closing. That's the veiling. That's, That's the veiling. You have to work through it. It's normal. I noticed I had to work through the veiling in the mind for some time. You have to be to have like determination and and um, continue doing undoing. This is what they used in tradition, the Zen stick, all the veiling when everything is they would hit, wake up, like go through it. Otherwise, you go unconscious. It's the tactic for the mind to shut down, to go unconscious. It does it also when you experience awareness, although there is no time, apparently the mind starts to come and veil it. So you have to just shift the attention, change and start again. So the mind works with the movement of its with its movement skillfully. This is why sometimes sitting for too long is no good use. People go into too long they get tamasic. Tamasic is a veiling, dullness. The mind gets dull. It's an inner alertness. It's not a, an external posture. So it's best to increase uh, the intensity of practice. Yes, every moment. So even if the body is ac active, 
or the mind is active, get it to concentrate or discriminate or inquire. Don't let it wander as much as possible. If I'm doing this uh, all day, the whole waking state, is that, is that enough vigilance? That's the only vigilance that is possible because it's the moment the, the from the moment the mind wake up to the waking state until it it falls unconscious to a dreaming state if the mind inquires in the waking state it will continue into the dreaming state and when you experience the presence of awareness in the waking state samadhi then it, the samadhi continues in the dreaming and the deep sleep state. So the whole work is in the waking state. into the dream state the witness observes a dream existentially free free of the dream itself The witness doesn't witness the, the dream. The witness is just a pointer for the mind coming back into awareness. It's just a step pointing from the point of view of the mind from going out inward. Because witness of something implies two. Awareness knows only itself, there is no other. No, no. Yes. Nowhere, known and knowledge are gone. The observer, the observed on the observing is gone. In awareness. This, they, they call it the tri triads. Yeah. So even the... So one observing the dream outside of the dream, separate, totally separate from the dream, is also the mind. It is the mind. Only. Totally? Only. Oh, only, yes. Also, the mind has to understand why to observe something that is not real. What is there to find in an illusion? Just more illusions. Shift the attention from it by inquiring. Treat it as a dream. It is.
and every thought that appears, look at it as a dream. It liberates the mind from getting attached. When the mind sees in the moment that the thought is not real, it cannot get attached to it because it is looking for the reality out of habit, out of forgetfulness, it is looking for the reality in the dream. When it sees it is a dream, it looks away from it. It shifts the attention from it. So just now, my attention is around the crown of my head. Is that a distraction? When, when the mind labels it, just recognize it's already projecting it. Just recognize that that's already a movement of the mind, projecting. So don't be interested even in that. Or just notice that shift the attention. Because in the beginning the mind is looking for particular experience. Yeah. It's a trick of the mind. Just notice and leave it. Yeah. Shift the attention. The experience of awareness is in every cell of the body. Yet the moment there is a recognition that it's somewhere, the mind labels it. It projects already. It happens so quickly. And this is discernment. Once it's seen, then the mind, it, shifted, it shifts its attention back. And then there's awareness without labeling, without projecting. attention moves to the back of the head and feels as though it's moving or sinking. This means the mind is paying attention to the sensation. Use it as a bridge. It's just a bridge, no more than that. Just observe it? Yeah, a bridge. Yeah. A bridge means observe and shift the attention from it because if you observe the mind is not in the past or future and it's just a bridge into awareness to disappear if not you anchor the mind in the sensation that's fine yet then it's there there is still identification there which is not a problem as long as there's the recognition that it's just a bridge and it's not the real thing that's all so then the mind would not keep attaching to it like it is the real thing that's all it won't so, yeah. so just notice it and discount it that's right
inquiry into the self when the mind is active it's a mental question when the mind rests and there is no thought that's true inquiry into the self it's no not no more mental just being aware of the two is really key one leads to another anyhow so the mind doesn't have yeah. to be concerned So an inquiry is still happening in the in the silence in the space. It's inquiring to the self when there is no movement. It means the mind is abiding in the self, so it rests as that. So it's it's not mental. That's what the wise Ramana or or Nazir Gadatta and Robert Adams are pointing to inquiry into the self. It doesn't stop, it's not only mental. It's when the mental sees and the mind rests as there. This is how the mind gets rooted in the beingness of awareness. Can you repeat that once more, Alan? Inquiry into the self <clears throat> has two layers. When you experience the presence of awareness, which is you, when thought appears, after that, you question it. That's one layer of inquiry. Now, after questioning, if there is no thought appearing and you experience the presence of awareness, this is inquiry into the self. It's no, no, not mental. That's where that sense of being changes. Yes. Apparently. Yes. This is when you truly realize that this is you. There's nothing else. It's this is you. It's absolute. Changeless awareness. The sense of being will no longer feel personal. 
when the experience of the beingness of who you are there is no personal the habit will come out and it will appear like there is personal this has to be examined the more it is examined it just evaporates it disappears gradually it appears like gradually because that's all happens in time right habits all happen in time thought appear time begins so that's why it appears to be gradually awareness has nothing to do with gradual Can you just say um, something about the uh, formal meditation, Alan? I'm not uh, doing any formal meditation. The formal... Mm, what I call meditation or formal meditation is just to be still. And once the physical body is still, then you can see the subtle movement of the mind and inquire. That's all. That's enough. Yeah. Otherwise, the mind turns the practice to be the goal and then it turns to be a meditator a separate entity meditating and it loves that because then it just change its identity from one to another doesn't matter like I'm a businessman and now I'm a meditator I am a material and now I'm spiritual just one concept to another.
I don't have any more questions, Alan. Good. <laughs> as long as it's clear, keep inquiry yeah. until the inquirer disappear and rest in the beingness of who you are. And if there are doubts or any question, you're more than welcome to send us email or Facebook, communicate with Inba, and we can set another call. No, I think your words today have really given some uh, conviction Con to the practice. Good. Conviction is essential. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you very much.